right. Hey, welcome everybody. Yo. We're so excited to do a collaborative team call tonight and wanted to welcome you to our November team call. So very exciting things have happened in the last month. And I wanted to invite all of us to pop in the chat and share a win from November. That's how we always start our, our month together as a team. And so we want to hear from you guys in the chat, blow it up. Everybody has to put something in there. So we wanna see at least 27 comments <laughs> of some wins. And this is actually a really important piece of your end of month, beginning of month process or system every single month. If you do not make it, a if you have not make, made it a habit so far to spend a little bit of time reflecting on one, what, what went well, <laughs> what, maybe you feel like didn't go so well and why, and just looking at those and evaluating, you will find it to be a really, really key piece in self-coaching and working your business with efficiency and helping you more move forward and farther and faster. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, awesome. You guys are all popping in there. Yes. Who earned the Nike shoes? Who earned more than one pair? This is like not time to be shy, you get to totally shout yourself out. If you have a teammate that you want to shout out, feel free to shout them out in the comments as well. So yes, super fun. We got all of the top and rollers, all of the uh, people that went silver, senior silver and gold, fast starters, uh, shout it out on our team page today. And yes, awesome. And it's a win. If you, sometimes we think that it's not like we didn't have a winning month if we didn't like max every incentive and mm -hmm. whatever, you know, a ton of people ranked up or what. I just want to encourage you guys. Sometimes we celebrate the little wins, you know, just as much as we celebrate, celebrate the big wins. So, and there's no, we're not comparing ourselves to other people, just being inspired by what went well. So congratulations, everybody for that. And mm, Next up, uh, were you going to share the incentives? No. Okay, Justin's not they, sure. Cool, hey, there's a cool thing about the incentives is that you get an email with the incentives and it's on the dashboard. You can locate, it used to be so hard to find. There's like finding Waldo to find the incentives. Now that's right on your dashboard. So I would recommend you get very familiar with the incentives and use them for, to your advantage. It's like free, it's like free plexus money that you get to either earn or share with somebody else. So um, definitely take advantage of that. They're offering you um, excellent incentives to help build your business. So take advantage of that. One I'll just say really quickly is the holiday cash, which how many of us could use some extra holiday cash for all the Christmas presents? <laughs> all of us. So Plexus has made a way for us to help more people share more health and happiness and Plexus with friends and family and people that we're sharing with by adding three, adding six, adding nine. So it's the three, six, nine incentive. So adding three, will, you will earn a hundred bucks, add six, and you'll earn $400. Or you could add three and help one go silver. Add nine, you earn 800 bucks or add six and help go one, help one go silver or above. So it must be a welcome pack order or a hundred dollar order. $800 is the maximum bonus you can earn <laughs> unless you have more than one account that, you, <laughs> that you're working. So very fun. And next up, so if you just popped on the chat, we we're just um, having a fun time celebrating all of the wins. If you're live on our Facebook, um, team page and you're seeing this you can pop in the chat on Facebook or in the comments what your win was for October and if you are new and joining us for the very first time welcome we're so excited you're here so I wanted to intro a sweet friend of ours and half of her team or well half of this call is her team <laughs> so I'm just really excited to uh, introduce Brenda Martin to you all some of you may know her because we collaboratively coached together last fall, mm -hmm. which was super fun. And um, I love, um, I'm just going to read her little bio because it's really impressive and super fun. So Brenda is a mother of eight awesome boys and three beautiful girls married to her one and only Diamond Ambassador, Delvin Martin. 
and loves her life of homeschooling and working with her family on their little piece of land in the country. And if y'all haven't seen their Martin Barn House, it's amazing. And so she became an ambassador in August of 2013. And prior to Plexus, she was a stay-at-home mom. Since then, she has been blessed with a strong, positive team, traveled all over the U.S. and Canada to share the Plexus opportunity and train thousands of ambassadors, including Leaders of Excellence, um, which is uh, located in Scottsdale, Arizona. She is an advocate for dreaming big, and her personal motto is, if you're asking God to move a mountain, you better be ready to pick up a shovel. <laughs> so you better you better write that down. That's a great quote. If you're asking God to move a mountain, you, be re you better be ready to pick up a shovel. And so um, I also wanted to mention that she is not only a diamond ambassador, she is a diamond senior ruby ambassador and a three-star diamond. So really impressive bio. I'm excited for you guys to hear a bit of vision casting from Mrs. Brenda. <laughs> well, goodness, it's my honor to be on here with you guys. It's always been so fun to team up with you, not to mention just the friendship we have, getting to meet, meet and hang out at events now and then, and we just appreciate you guys so much. And you, it's really funny because Megan asked me for like a quick, you know, a few points for a uh, intro bio for me. And I'm like, well, I happen to have this one on hand. That is usually what they, <laughs> I share for corporate events when they read um, and a bio or intro off for me. And it sounds so like too wild now that I hear you read it. You guys, keep in mind, I started out as a stay-at-home mom, never having done anything like this. I started at silver and then I went, we didn't even have senior silver. I went gold. And then I went senior gold. I mean, it's the same for all of us. And I've achieved a lot of this because what I attribute most of it to, besides the fact that it was a direct answer to prayer and God brought this to us because he knew it's what we needed. And we believed that with our whole heart. And I can never get away from belief because when people ask me about my journey, I like believed like almost ridiculously like a faith of a little child <laughs> that I had in the beginning. And so I just don't even know how else to describe it, but you guys have to solidly, solidly believe that this is for you and it can change your future. And I know many of you have already experienced enough to, to have your belief strong. Maybe some of you need it built even stronger, but I have been doing a dreamy big call for my team for, oh my, I started this summer sometime. Every week we get together and we just talk about dreaming big. It's so fun. Sometimes, I mean, I just share my heart. Sometimes I have, I open it up for discussion. Sometimes we bring on a guest speaker and to have that as a focus, I've had just gotten so much good feedback from my team that we're saying, are saying they almost forgot how to really dream. And I call it dreaming big for a reason, because I feel like if I wouldn't have dreamed big, I wouldn't have hit the first goal I had because I had a dream here, down here, but I actually went beyond it a little bit. And even, you know, you hear the quote, I, I should look at my notes. I did actually take notes. I had wrote, write, written notes. Um, there's a quote, shoot for the moon so that if you miss, you fall among the stars, right? So that's, I just feel like it is just so important that we always know with this company especially you can dream big and don't be ashamed of that uh, i was listening to something by john maxwell this week and he said he made a comment like um a lot of people never find the courage to share their dreams with other people the and that is like holds them back because they never had the courage to share that big dream and um Another thing that I think about when I think about my journey and dreaming big is the fact that I had a lot of solid reasons for building to diamond and it wasn't sort of a, I don't know, superficial or mystical. It was all stuff you could grab a hold of. You could, I could feel, I could smell, I could taste like this was going to be our life and it was substance. And so that's just my question for you guys tonight. Do you when you think of your dream, do you know it is something like tangible, like that you can actually write it down 
you can describe it to somebody else because you know so fully what it is. It's like a done deal. It's a story you can write already. And if you don't have that strong of a dream, um, that's another reason why some people don't fulfill. I came across, speaking of John Maxwell, something else really cool that he has 10 questions to ask yourself if you um, are struggling to reach your dream or just to like discover how set up for success you are. If you can answer these 10 questions affirmatively, then you are on the right track to reach your dream. If you can only answer one or two, that would be a big clue as to why you probably can't reach your dreams. So when you think of your dreams and the reasons you have for reaching them, does it kind of, you'd be like, oh, I really only have one aspect of that dream. Like it's only really one reason that I'm working this dream just because I, you know, I don't know. I just want to prove to myself I can do it. Or you just, you know, you only have kind of one thing you can barely put your finger on. That could be your light bulb moment. Here are the 10 questions. Now you can jot them down or not, but you'll see a pattern as I read them. Um, first of all, number one, is my dream really my own? So that's ownership. Number two, do I clearly see my dream? This is something we talked about on my last dream big call with my team. We talked about vision and being able to clearly know what that dream is. And when I say dream, you guys, I'm talking about your why why you want to work this plexus business, what you see in your future for your family. Um, for a lot of you here, it's diamond. My solid shower uppers on my team who always show up, do all the things. They are the ones who have that diamond dream. Okay. Number three, am I depending on factors within my control to achieve the dream? That is huge. If you're dreaming about maybe reaching this dream, but it's not even stuff that I can even really control. That could be a clue. Number four, does my dream compel me to follow it? So what gets you up out of bed in the morning? Number five, do I have a strategy to reach the dream? So something I want to really um, work on for my team and for 2023. Um, Number six, have I included the people I need to realize my dream? This would be your shareholders. <laughs> For me, it was my family. Like they were my cheerleaders. They were my helpers. They were my team before I had much of a team. But building a team is the best. Developing leaders. Number six, have I included the people I need? Oh, that was number six, sorry. Seven, am I willing to pay the price? I remember hearing a quote soon after I joined. Um, I think it was probably Sonia Dudley, who said, freedom doesn't come without a sacrifice. And so that was kind of the point where I really committed, sat down with my family, and we decided we are willing to sacrifice to meet this dream. Number eight, am I moving closer to my dream? You feeling that forward movement or seeing that forward movement? Number nine, does working to achieve bring me to, to achieve my dream bring me satisfaction? And number 10, does my dream benefit others? If you feel like you can answer yes to most of those, you're, you're on a really good track, a really good path. And that just really, uh, something I wanted to share with you guys, because I don't know if any of you have thought it in, in that way before. Like, do I have enough valid reasons? That's the bottom line. Do I have enough valid reasons to reach my dream? And if you do, you can achieve it. And like, um, Megan and Justin just said, we have so many amazing incentives with this company, but remember these monthly incentives are only for short term to help you reach that. So don't ever get out of, you know, it's called month to month to month. And you're like, what's even happening here? Keep that dream in your, in your <laughs> ahead of you at all times. Okay. That's pretty much all for now, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it goes, I feel like it just segue so well with the idea of reflection like reflecting and thinking through in those in the in that list of 10 questions be looking to see like ooh 
I need to get clear on or clearer on some of these because if you're in a if you're in a season of you're stalling out or you feel just blah or I don't know whatever season you're in maybe you're in a season moment of momentum it's still good to think through those areas because it's only going to propel you forward more right and so um revisit the dream I can look in front of my computer right now on my door and I have my dream boards for 2020, 2021, and 2022. And I have, it's a, it's pictures that I've drawn. And if you've been to any of our one team retreats, that's something we, we do is just put pen to paper and draw little pictures. They're not amazing, but there's something with the, the brain hand connection where you make your dream in picture format. Can you all hear us still? We're good to go. Um, so anyways, Oh, all right, connections. Weird. <laughs> Sorry there. But anyways, yes, if you have never made a dream board, if you've never really kind of journaled your why, I would just challenge you to do it. And if you've done it, but it's been a while or you need to go back and revisit it, do it because it's going to make you even more gritty, even more um, persevering through the hard hard times or hard seasons or when life is crazy and you just have a lot going on it's going to be that constant thread of oh yeah I can't forget my dream so anyways thank you Brenda that was so encouraging I thought it would be fun to bring on a story from somebody new and so my sweet friend Brooke is going to pop on and share with us a little piece of her story she is a brand new Fast Start Gold Ambassador. She double ranked last month. And uh, I remember she messaged me, I think at the end of August and was like, hey, I don't remember exactly how the conversation unfolded, but it was something like, hey, every time I pray, Plexus just keeps coming up. <laughs> so I feel like we should chat. And um, true story, Brooke was definitely on Dream Team list of mine. I don't know that I specifically ever asked her about the business, which I totally should have, but we, she used like a Joyum skincare box. I think she uh, strategically won one of my giveaways. I don't know. We've had, we've chatted, we knew each other through um, homeschool connections um, from a couple of years ago. So, and then, oh, they built a farmhouse. And so she let me come down a couple of years ago and just see her beautiful home and get ideas. So anyways, a cool fun fact about Brooke and her husband is she is a homeschool mom and a nurse. And her husband is a doctor. And so it's really cool. We did a sip and see at her house um, or their house earlier in October. And it was really cool to hear their perspective of, you know, even what, what they see on a clinical level um, with the people that Karsten specifically helps. So anyways, Brooke, if you're game for popping on and unmuting, we would love to hear a little bit of why your perspective on why you started and just the scoop. Hey guys, thanks Megan for having me on. Um, so why I started, <laughs> it's actually, it happened so fast. I feel like, um, well, to back up over the last couple of years, my husband and I have been interested in gut health stuff and we were doing kombucha and fermented vegetables and not because we were ill, mainly because we knew that it was good for us. And so, um, Fast forward, my husband was coming home frequently saying, people are not well. People are not well. I can't help them. Um, I don't have enough time in the office to do this. This isn't even my, uh, he practices sports medicine. So the, the, con, the conversations of gut health doesn't normally come up in his practice. But he, we both knew um, that so many people needed help. So I knew Megan and we had, you know, connected several times, but nothing regarding Plexus really. Um, and I just, but I knew she was, I knew she did Plexus and I knew that it was a gut health company. And so, yeah, I, I texted her one day and I was like, this is so strange. This is so crazy, but I just keep thinking, I just need to contact you. And now looking back, it was totally the Lord. And he just kept working on me. Um, and so I finally contacted her and I was like, okay, let's just do this. And like I said, my husband and I weren't even quote unquote needing the products. We weren't really ill. It wasn't one of those things like, 
oh, we have this, this, and this to work on. However, we were pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, sometimes you think you're great until you realize you're not. <laughs> and so um, my husband especially saw a lot of results um, and, and me too, but for him, he did the reset uh, first and he was my guinea pig. So that's, that's why we got started. Um, and then as far as some of the things, um, I guess, actions that we, we started taking, my husband has been a big help. He has been able to talk to a few patients um, kind of on the side and just be like, hey, you know, contact Brooke and, and she'll chat. So, um, so I have been able to sign up a few people through that. Um, but of course we had the sip and see and we did an online um, event so those were, those were two things I did right off the bat. And of course, Megan made me post <laughs> and I didn't want to, <laughs> she was like, you won't die. So I did it. <laughs> and honestly, that first post that I did it, my phone blew up. I mean, not, not everybody signed up of course, but a lot of conversations were happening. And then I did a couple lives, um, pretty quickly after that, um, just to get, I guess, I kind of feel like I came out of the woodwork. I was on social media, but I was just one that just scrolled and looked. I never interacted with anybody on it. So, um, so surprisingly, I don't know, people just kind of kept contacting me and I, I have tried really hard to try to talk to the people um, that we have started and keep in contact with them and check on them um, because I do want them to feel better. And I know that this can work, um, but I still have fears about posting. I still do. I still have troubles with thinking of content of what to say um, because I, I, my biggest fear was like, oh, I don't want to be salesy. I don't, I don't want to come across like I'm trying to just sell a product and make a quick buck. So, but my intent was that I know this can help people. Um, and I'm so really for the last two months, I've just been doing things scared the whole time. And I still do. I'm scared. <laughs> So, um, you know, I just, it's been kind of whirlwind, but here we are. <laughs> Yay. Yes. Well, and, um, I think it's really just inspiring to hear, to hear your story because mm -hmm. sometimes it's easy to get lax or just like, want want about, I don't know, our story or whatever, but it's just so good to hear fresh perspective. And even you guys as um, medical professionals and, and seeing things clinically, I'm, I know at your sip and see, um, your husband shared like on x-rays, he's like, everybody is constipated. It's like an eight-year-old is full of number two, <laughs> like can't even see his spine, Right. you know? So, so interesting. Um, the I just thought it was interesting. I'm just sharing and just picking out a couple of things um, that Brooke said right off the bat that she did. And so if you are helping somebody new get started in sharing or you are relaunching yourself, did you guys hear what she did? She took specific action, just like Brenda, that quote that I read, she, she didn't just expect God to move the mountain. She picked up the shovel or, or the quote was basically pick up the shovel. So the taking action steps would be, you make the first post, you encourage them to make a first post. And Brooke actually told me that she wasn't going to post. So I was like, <laughs> okay. And then I don't remember what had the conversation when I maybe have to go back and look if I, if, would you remember? Yes, I do. <laughs> you texted me and you said, I double dog dare you to post. <laughs> That's what she said. So I did. That's, that sounds so Megan. I love it. That's actually a, a Jordan Roddenberry uh, message, which is so funny. And well, I think you said to me, like, I don't know if anyone will sign up. I think maybe that's you said or expressed some level of fear. But I was like, I think you all are pretty influential. I don't think, I, I don't know if I verbalized that to you, but once you posted and you were like, my post is blowing up. I'm like, I knew it would, I knew it would. <laughs> so first post, and then we did an online event and then we did a sip and see, and those were fairly close in proximity. So that's one thing I would just encourage you guys with as you're helping people to share, if they're open to it, don't let a big lag time happen. Like, Life's never going to get convenient. The laundry's never going to be all done. You're never going to be completely have a free week to go 
post the sip and see for somebody. Like you just have to make it happen. Like within a week, what mm-hmm. could you get scheduled? Right. And so we did those pretty much back to back. And then, oh, she's she's been super, super brave. And they went live together yeah. and sharing their perspective and just educating. I just love their heart for educating people. I mean, Karsten um, shared and then Brooke has been consistently like Wellness Wednesday or something. So, uh, like I see you consistently hopping on uh, Facebook Live mm-hmm. and just talking. <laughs> and so I just love that you are being doing it scared. Like, honestly, that's how I have done it. Like every piece of this, Brenda is nodding her head too. (laughs) Um, Because I think as entrepreneurs, just in general, like mm, when you launch into something new, are you ever going to know all the ropes or is it, or is it going to feel comfortable when you're starting something Hmm. new? No, probably not. So Brooke, super duper excited. Congratulations on Faster Senior Silver, Faster Gold. And she earned two pairs of Nikes and plus three more. So she signed nine level ones in October, which is so cool. And I just love your heart for helping people. And honestly, that's, I think that's what combats the salesy fear is like when you're, when your heart is genuinely like, we truly want to help people, (laughs) you know, that's what the, that's the cool thing we get to do mm-hmm. with plexus is we get to help other people and that's really where impact is that's where where like the success comes when you serve more and more and more people <laughs> and then your platform grows your influence grows there's just your leadership grows like you learn so much personal growth by doing this i know i have um friends on our team and she's one spe- one specifically she's a jewel and she's been in ministry for decades and she's like i have grown more spiritually and personally in my years in plexus i think she's been in for six years Mm -hmm. than all these years of ministry (laughs) is it i mean it's so ironic but so cool and fascinating so do you have any yeah so awesome story we had an awesome time we went down and did the sip and see and everything this the only sip and see we've ever been to by the way where there was a hundred percent sign up rate Like everybody who came was either an ambassador or someone that wanted to learn and they learned and they signed up. I think there was four signed up that night. Mm-hmm. Like the four who weren't ambassadors all signed up. I'm like, um, well, I've never seen that before. So that was pretty awesome to be a part of that. Um, so that was fun. One thing I want to just encourage everybody with is I think <clears throat> she talked about doing it scared. We still do things scared. You, Megan and I are going to speak at the Super Saturday event in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're not professional speakers. We're <laughs> going to do it scared. Like it's, but we're going to do it. We're not going to not do it. So it's, I think that that's just a part of this. And once you overcome one fear in Plexus, there's another one waiting. I, we don't get to this. I just don't think in life, if you're, if you're on the upward journey, I just don't think you get to a point to where it's just, okay, it's cool. We're not going to do anything now. Mm-hmm. I, it's just, it's not designed that way. And so, and Plexus is, is the same way. And it's like, if once you do something scared, you know, you overcome one obstacle, there's another one waiting. <laughs> Actually, I did it, not a sermon, but a, um, a, bunch of high, with a bunch of high school boys this week, I was driving a bus. Don't ask me how I got roped into that, but I did anyway. And I ended up leading devotions with the boys and I was telling them, about this very thing, overcoming giants, defeating the giants in your life. We were talking about David and Goliath. And I said, the, I said, this is why we must face the giants in our life. Because once you defeat Goliath, there's four more waiting. Like if you read through, Goliath had four sons that David had to contend with later on. Like once one's down, there's four waiting. That's why we have to take the one down in front of us now. So whatever it is, do it scared. If it's alive, talking to somebody, sharing the business, whatever it is, just go do it. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not going to do it perfect. So what? Join the crowd. We're not going to do this Zoom tonight perfect. Okay? It's just do it. Um, and one of the things, too, about being scared is the medical field, folks. Like, as far as plexus is concerned, the medical field is wide open. Mm. And most doctors want to genuinely help people. 
Like that's the oath they took was to help make people well. Mm -hmm. And they're seeing a, they're seeing a disconnect between the oath they took and what they're being asked to do for the patient. So there's a, I think the medical field is a, is a wide open opportunity for plexus. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that we maybe don't approach someone in the medical field or a doctor is because we're afraid. Well, they know more than we do. Well, of course they do. They're doctors. So, but this could be a great fit. Is look at what it's done for Brooke and for Karsten. Look at what it's done for um, Brooke Hemingway and Thomas Hemingway. Mm -hmm. Right? So my point is, don't be afraid. The medical field is wide open. If you have somebody in your network who's in the medical field, reach out to them. Mm -hmm. They would be an asset to your team. Yeah. You want to recruit people who know more than you. I do, you know, and I have a whole team of people smarter than me. It's awesome. And so, like, you know, I, so don't be afraid um, of the medical field when it comes to plexus. Mm -hmm. Brooke, can you share? They're asking what your first post was. Do you remember? Was it this uh, post? I think it was my reset box. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had got that and I, I think I had mixed up the pink drink with it and I had like, yeah. And I just said something like, uh, getting ready to start, um, a journey into gut. Oh, does that ask her on her end? Okay, tell her. Whoops. She's frozen. <laughs> she was, yeah, she just did a basic first post. Yeah. I'm um, just kind of getting it out there. She's frozen, but hopefully. Oh. Are you back? There you are. I'm back. Sorry. No, you're good. Do I need to repeat it? Yes. So you started <laughs> with what you were sharing, like what your verbiage was. Okay. So I think I just said, um, I'm getting ready to start on a, a gut health journey. Who wants to join me? And, oh, I also posted the graphic with the, um, the symptoms of like yeast overgrowth. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't even know if those were back to back or which one was first, but it was one of those really close together. Mm -hmm. And, and that's um, the graphic particularly is what people mm -hmm. responded to. Mm -hmm. And one thing I guess I forgot to mention that I think was probably helpful is that you and Carson agreed to be on that new ambassador coaching, like right after you started. Okay. Remember that with Carissa? Yes. yes. Did you find that helpful? I did. Yeah. <laughs> just threw it right in the fire. <laughs> yeah. get, just I did. Yeah. But you know what, though? I had already pre-decided, <laughs> like, if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm just going to go all in. I'm not, I don't want to just, I don't want to dabble in it. I'm either just going to go all for it or yeah. not. Mm -hmm. And yeah. maybe that's part of my personality, but. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, yeah. Um, so I, I feel like, mm, it was probably helpful, even just perspective wise, because Carissa's husband is um, in um, the medical field. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I was just like, Ooh, this could be really great. So I just, I felt like Carissa brought out some good things. You had a list of questions like, okay, here's where my brain space is at. Yeah. So I felt like that was helpful. And then we did meet up, um, in person. Oh, or, yeah. yeah, we did. I forgot about breakfast. that just to chat and over yeah. breakfast. Cause we live about two hours apart. So we met somewhat in the middle mm -hmm. and, um, had a two hour chit chat, which I think was helpful. So mm -hmm. as you guys are sharing and helping people don't neglect to be, be like personal connection piece of like meeting together. Cause you can there and you can just go over so many things in like a one, one conversation or a 10 minute phone call, you know, that would maybe take six months on your own to like work through. So anyways, just a couple of um, insights there. And I was going to say, do it scared, but also do it urgently. I feel like, like looking back in my very first mm. um, months and years of plexus, and even now, actually, I guess this is my MO, <laughs> do it fast. Like, like if there is something scary, like take the action quickly. Don't sit on it. And Justin mentioned to me before, he's like, yeah, when you get an idea, like you, you will have implemented it before you go to bed. He's like, and, and he, you've said like when, where I will probably think about it for two weeks, Right. <laughs> you've already implemented it, made some pivots and right. done it again or whatever. So, um, anyways, that just don't sit 
on and procrastinate on the whatever the scary thing is. I'll share really quick because this kind of goes in with the the whole medical field thing. I so a friend of a yeah a friend of a friend. So a friend of mine on Facebook, who is actually interestingly Laura Laura Ferry's um, daughter in law, was complaining about her migraines on Facebook, and she her daughter in law had worked with this travel nurse at a local hospital here, and I didn't know it at the time, but there was a comment, a lady that commented and said she had been battling Lyme disease for nine years. So I saw that it was like, Lexus could help her. <laughs> Do I say something? I'm like, heck yeah, I'm going to say something. I mean, what am I out? I'm going to message her. And if she like gets mad at me, <laughs> it's okay. Like, I don't even know her. And so I mess. I just remember Jessica and Tamara saying, do it, do something scary every day, like expand your comfort zone, do like, just do it scary. So I messaged her. I'm like, Tammy, uh, I know a friend of mine has recovered from Lyme disease using these plexus supplements that I'm on. I was like, would you be open to learning more about it? She's like, oh, sure. Send me the link. So, um, and then she signed up right there. And then the products were shipping to her. So I assumed that she was on them, taking them consistently. And she called me about a year and a half later. It's like, I just started these products. They sat on my counter for 18 months. I'm so sick that I just decided like, what am I out? I just, I, this could only help me feel better. Even just if it's helping my gut feel better. And so she was in the middle of Herxheimer, you know, de detox all that. And apparently I said enough, I like on the phone call, I was like, yeah, she's a goner. She's done. She's going to cancel and whatever. Apparently I said enough of the right things that she was like, Oh, her time of reaction. I know what that is. And so she just floored it. Like with, like with her products, like kind of kept going and pushing through that. And which is a little counterintuitive to usually how I coach people on their products. Um, but she was a travel nurse. She had a whole network of mm -hmm. people that had Lyme disease and co-infections. And um, she went Ruby in three months <laughs> and um, went Emerald in 2020. And so it's just so interesting yep. how we can't play small. We can't like sit on the sidelines. We have to get in the game, get on the, get on the playing field in terms of um, this opportunity. Like mm -hmm. this is a stewardship that God, God's given us. And so let's maximize it. That's, that's my, that's my two cents. And like going all in, even in these last 60 days of the year, often like there's a lot going on. There's more maybe than usual going on our brain space bandwidth. You know, we're thinking Thanksgiving, hosting extra, you know, Christmas prepping presents, all the things, but I promise you there is still time to get things done in your business, even through this busy season. So hey Megan, can I jump in and say something really yes, quick? Please do. Because when you talk about all in, I just remember I loved hearing that from Brooke because girl, don't take your foot off the pedal. This is something that can be so amazing for you if you just keep that all in attitude. When I look back on my journey, I this is something I see almost lacking because we're getting lazy in a sense with all of our online opportunities, mm -hmm. um, especially since 2020. We just think, oh, we can sit here in our chair and just talk with everybody online and do our Zooms and all that. But there is nothing like in person. When mm -hmm. I was gold and senior gold, I was traveling. My husband and I, we traveled like seven and eight hours to our new silvers and said, if you can get 10 people in your living room, we'll come to your house. And we tried to get like maybe three people within a driving distance for one weekend and go to a Friday night event, Saturday morning event, Saturday night event. And like, we just did that over and over. And we like literally used our son's vehicle because we didn't even have a vehicle that was good for traveling. We just, we were like, so all in, and we did all these in-person events. Um, and I will, we don't regret that at all. That connection is though every one of those people that I did that with are still with me. Okay, one, I can think of one who's not, but um, they, it just makes such a difference. And I just wanna encourage you guys, don't like think you can just do all this from your house. Yes, if we wish we could and it's nice and some people can, but just saying, get those in-person events, get that urgency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one thing that we did. Um, we hit the road. Mm -hmm. And we weren't afraid. We went to teams. We did. It. We took our kids to every corner of the United States <laughs> and every place in between. Like we're going to a Plexus event, kids. Hop on the bus, you know. And so, and we went, and it was awesome. And we didn't know how to do them. No, we just went and did them. 
there's people there that were willing and we're like, we're in, we'll be there. I don't think we had any sort of slide. You're in camp. Maine? We'll drive to Maine. We did. <laughs> like, it was crazy. It was awesome. We had such a good time. And, and it was, but I think that, you know, we went all over the place and we, we didn't know what we were doing. And we didn't have all the details figured out. Like, so one time we went to an Amish community. Oh, yeah. To do an event with no electricity. So I show up with my. Um, oh, we did have a slideshow for that. I showed up with my uh, um, projector. projector and my screen and was like, oh, man, we don't even have electricity. Like, so what do we do? I, 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 I went to a Hutterite colony to do one. It's like the only time I was ever on a colony. Like they invited me in. I couldn't believe it. But yeah, yeah so it all. this was an Amish community, but it was like this little um, tin house town in the in a Amish community and the people next door weren't Amish so the people that we were doing the event for they went next door and next thing I know we have a extension cord coming through the window from the neighbor's house so we could have power on our <laughs> on our uh, projector and so anyway so guys it's not gonna look perfect but just go and do it and just mm -hmm. Have fun with it, man. We've had such a good time. Um, it's been a blast. We still, I and mean, we still yeah. um, somewhat consistently do in-person things. Yeah. Here at our house, we host. And then when we're right. traveling, traveling down to see his mom, we always stop at our team in Tennessee mm -hmm. and, you know, out West last year, we stopped yeah. in Iowa. So um, it is valuable to do in-person things because it's just like your presence in your stories like there's it's you there's so much that's caught that's not necessarily when you just do it online all the time and from a business perspective it plan your trip like through a teammate's <laughs> town <laughs> you can write it off like think like think through like these are just great business tactics you know and so anyway. yes okay all righty well you know how there's nothing new under the sun I'm actually sure. going to change the view here so I can see everybody's faces. Okay. There's nothing new under the sun, right? So I was on a jewel call with Jessica Huffley, if some of you know her. Um, she is a nine-star diamond in Plexus. She's an amazing leader. She has such great ideas. And one of the things that she did on her call was pull someone on and coach them live just for the moment. So I thought we could just duplicate that right now. It's not going to take that much time. Um, and just, I'm going to... I'm going to ask the question she asked. So who on this call would like to have more business builders on their teams? If that is you, put a one in the comment, in the comments or the chat. Oh, yay. There's a lot of you. Hooray. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question of the day is how do I attract more business builders? How do I attract more business builders? Okay, um, let's see. I'm gonna pull someone where that I know I can pull up their Facebook. So, um, I'm gonna pick someone. If I have a who is who's game for volunteering? If you're game for volunteering, raise your hand. I might even pick someone that's not volunteering. I don't have friends with her. Okay, Amber Trantham. Are you game for hopping on live? I'm going to coach you live. Hmm. I am here and ready. Fabulous. Okay. So how are you going to attract more business builders? What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. What I have been doing, I don't feel like it is working the way I think it should be working. Hmm? I feel like they should just like, see my post and hop on but I know in my mind that is not reality at all um I am I feel like I've stalled um I forget to do it scared and I paralyze myself a little um and I know I am having to learn how to post more about the business and reach out more with the business opportunity. Okay. How much do you currently post about or, or reach out about? Um, 
Let's see. Since the call with Justin, we had set up a thing to where I need to post at least three times a week about the business and least uh, two to three times about the products. Okay. And that's what I'm working towards. I keep forgetting to post in the mornings. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that part. Um, but I'm struggling with um, like finding good business posts that make sense to what I feel like my audience is needing, but I may be going about that the complete wrong way. Okay. So we're going to look, we're going to just scroll your Facebook really quick and just take a peek. Okay. That's awesome. I'm touching product post. Happy anniversary. This is an awesome post. You all see this one. This is one I would totally duplicate. Um, I've actually saved it for myself, actually, because I thought it was a great idea. So this gal, this is Brooke Lieberger, I think. Anyways, um, she did a great business post. It's so simple, just tangible something that Plexus is providing for their family, being able to go to Costco, you know? And so love that post. And I think that people need to relate to what we're, we're talking about, right? When we're talking about mm -hmm. money for the business. So awesome post there. Um, oopsie. Work week. Got how talking about leadership, comfort zones, inspiring post. Yes, yes, yes. Do you do lives or stories? Um, I do do stories. I've done, I can't remember if I've, I've done like three. I try to post pretty much three, four times a week, something with my pink drink with like every day, it's kind of a recurring theme I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I also try to throw in, you know, and, and I've tried to make it, I've tried to branch out and make my stories more intriguing, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Like not just saying the same thing every day, but like, I was trying to think of the one and I can't even think of it right now that I had, I had, oh, um, it was something about my, uh, pink drink in hand or my morning, how did I put that? My morning elixir or something in hand. I can't remember exactly the word I used, but it was like, I wanted to use like different words that were like, kind of a stop your scroll, stop and wait. What, did, what is she talking about? Um, you know, kind of moment, kind of eye catching, grabbing attention. Do I'm trying to branch out and do that more. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you go live in your stories at all? Or do you go live on your wall? I, I try to go live in my stories, but I think with an update, something changed and I got to figure it out again. Okay. Like I had done it before, but most only what I can do is like post like a video, which takes forever to do. Okay. Because well, I have to edit and adjust and got it. all things. So the story, so stories, I would say, um, when we were on the call, when the jewel call, um, I think it was Jordan Rodberry said that she posts live in her stories every day about the business. And I see Marian Anderson doing that and other people, which I think is super inspiring because I'm not that consistent. But um, I just want to say just in general, your posts are on point. Like I see you up leveling big time, even this one. So incredibly thankful that my paycheck from my business paid my credit card payment. And then you hashtagged and a cute picture of you. So I love that you're trying to use words that will catch people's attention, intriguing them. Mm -hmm. that. So kudos on that. And also here, like this Brooke Kleberger post, she's, um, I love mm -hmm. following other people because it gives me ideas. So love that about mm -hmm. your social media, that you're using ideas from other people. And you don't even like sometimes... I won't necessarily use their testimony. I'll just take their idea and create it to make my own, you know? So yeah. if some of you are feeling like you lack creativity or brain space for posting, 
follow Simplexus people, Simplexus jewels and diamonds that you really like how they post and then duplicate what they're doing. Don't try to become them, but just for ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it saves me so much time and brain space. So back to your, um, you're, you're in Justin's uh, gold coaching. <laughs> so you yes. are following the instructions that he gave you. So awesome job on that. Amazing. I thought I was going to find somebody that didn't post at all about the business. So you totally threw me off there by, because you do have some business posts and that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that so Only good. recently. Okay. <laughs> well, Only recently. We're one step ahead of you. Yeah. You're, you're, um, you've made those pivots. And I think mm -hmm. one thing that you said is um, some words that you used were paralyzed, stalled. I need to post more, reach out more about the business. Um, I need to <clears throat> do more, do it scared more and find good business posts. So uh -huh. I want to talk about that really quickly because this is an interesting concept. When I was in Portugal, I was coached at a tea time with Emily Gibson and she had some really interesting insights for me that I was like, wait, I don't know if I agree, agree with you. <laughs> but her, her, because I've always been to like take the action and the results will follow. And I think in large part, still there is truth and merit to that. But there is so much that goes on in our brains that can stop or hinder us from the potential that we need to be maximizing. And so she, her thing was um, in this specific situation, it wouldn't have mattered. So this was a, a specific situation where there was this late, this girl that did this business coaching course and she did everything about it except the scariest piece, which was 200 business reach outs over the course of 12 weeks, I think it was. And Emily said, well, it wouldn't have mattered if she did the 200 reach outs. She wouldn't have been effective because of the mindset block that she was having mm -hmm. that was keeping her from taking that action. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wait, so because I'm such an action oriented person, I'm like, wait, I don't want, like, how is that even possible? But it goes back to that whole CTFAR model. If y'all are familiar with that, and the basic idea is our circumstances or our fa you know facts of our life create our thoughts, which create our feelings, which um, CTFA, which drive our, which create action. And action can look like action, inaction, or reaction, which then create our results. So Amber, I will ask you, when you are verbalizing things like feeling paralyzed, stalled, I don't know if you said stuck, um, Tell me what feelings come up for you. Or when you say, I just need to post more or reach out more about the business. Are there feelings, specific feelings that are coming up or even other specific thoughts? Um, I, think, I think one of the things that holds me back is the fact that my husband, um, no matter that I still earn money from Plexus still continues to tell me that it's uh, a scheme and that it is um, a, not going to work. And he, he does not back me with my Plexus business at all. And I think that's one of the things that really just that negativity just, I just really struggle with. And my mom, she has one um, ambassador under her and I have tried desperately many times to get her to understand that you can do this because she has so much influence and yet she continues to be negative about it and saying she's too busy and this and that. And I think that that has like played into how I'm looking at things maybe because I am relying on two people I love and I so what feeling I'm taking I am I am accepting their opinion instead of following my heart mm. but you didn't really answer my question because my question was what feeling comes up mm. for you with posting about the business sharing the business what is the actual feeling or sometimes, sometimes like, I feel like it, like maybe like I don't deserve it or like, um, 
like that it'll never happen. Okay. Uh, is that a feeling? Um, would that be fear? <laughs> yeah. Fear? Prob fear that it will never happen probably would be fear would be the feeling. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting how it's hard sometimes to figure out what feeling it is because we sometimes yeah. describe the situation or right. like when husband is saying it's not going to work, what feeling mm -hmm. is that? Fear? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So from the feeling of fear, how does that, what type of actions or what, well, maybe we should talk about, yeah. What actions do you typically take from that feeling? Paralyze. It, like, I feel like it, the, like the fear will paralyze me and into doing nothing Mm -hmm. Even though I know in the past when I have taken action, when I have had the feelings of fear, like it wouldn't work. And then like it has worked. Mm -hmm. And of course I feel like, I don't know, sometimes I just feel like amazed, shocked, surprised, ecstatic that it did work. But then at the same time, when it, it's like it, it comes back around again and then I'll paralyze again. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it will probably keep coming up <laughs> just like J Justin was talking about slaying the giants. It's mm -hmm. not that we're going to one and done it and it's never going to come up again. And the brain is never going to yeah. touch this again because it will, mm -hmm. and there'll be different reoccurring thoughts that pop up. But I think the, the awareness piece of, we don't have to be on the runaway horse with our unmanaged mm -hmm. thoughts. We could actually be intentional about the thoughts that we choose to think. And if we feel mm -hmm. like the thought that we're thinking isn't actually going to help us feel the right, the feeling that we want to be feeling and creating the action that we want to be taking, then we can take the cop, the fat, the left, the thought captive and consider a different thought. Like the idea that all thoughts are optional is mm -hmm. a very freeing concept to me. And yeah. we could practice a new thought. So uh, one tool that I will give you all is when, so is anyone else relating to this? If you're relating to fear about posting about the business, fear of sharing, can you pop in the chat? So she, I know she's not alone. Right. <laughs> I think it's common to many of us. Um, I want to give you guys a tool really quick. And that is when you recognize that you are stuck in like your brain or yeah. you're stuck in some thoughts or you're even feeling a feeling of fear. I want you to uh -huh. stop and recognize where it's at in your body. Is it in your chest area? Is it in your belly? Where is it? Because I've, I've heard the analogy that when you try to suppress feelings, it's like holding the beach ball underwater. <laughs> Eventually it's going it's gonna to pop out and pop way, way out of control. Right. And so it's really, really interesting when you recognize where it's at in your body, how it, it tends to just like dissolve the feeling when your brain can link those on uh, the, um, the emotion that your thoughts are creating for you. So just as a really weird example, I use this on myself when I was getting ready to per play for church on Sunday morning, I'm a musician, but I still like, I don't know why, why does church music make me nervous? I don't know. It's like chords. It's not hard, but there's a level of like performance. I'm performing. My, my pits are sweaty. I'm like, wow. Um, and I was like, wait, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling nervous. And like, let's get curious about that. Where is that in my body? And it was just so interesting how, when I like coached myself in my brain, how it helped dissipate those emotions in my body, those feelings in my body and helped to release, I guess, some of those feelings. So anyways, just a, a little tool of getting curious and recognizing it in your body and helping yourself calm down. So it's kind of like the de-escalate the situation type of thing. So that's a, that's a tangible tool. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is what new thought or new feeling do you want to have surrounding your business reach outs or posts? So where are you at, Amber? Oh, there you are. <laughs> So what thoughts or what feeling do you want to have instead of paralyzed, instead of feeling undeserving, instead of fearing, 
what emotion do you want to be feeling? Successful. That I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. And that I'm helping others mm -hmm. um, with better financial, um, helping them with their finances to be more financially stable than they currently are. Mm -hmm. Those are feelings I want to have. Okay. Is that a feeling? A feeling or like an emotion? Like what emotion would you want to be feeling when you make the post, when you do the business reach out or when you call a friend on the phone and chat with her? Successful. Okay. Is that an emotion? What emotion? I feel like I need this thesaurus um, just to be able to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple in I'm the looking. chat, actually. Peaceful, joyful, powerful. Instead of stressed or feeling behind, joy and prepared in my business. Ooh, I love those. Ooh, how confident. about confident? You like that? Confident. Okay. Yes, confident. Mm -hmm. Isn't this powerful, though? Like when we actually mm -hmm. talk about some of the thoughts, like the thoughts are real, <laughs> the, like the negative, you like self-preserving, protective um, thoughts that keep us plain small, right? And mm -hmm. also thinking through the emotions behind that. So yeah. what is the new thought that you want to create, that you want to think or offer your brain when you start feeling those paralyzed feelings or have the negative things pop up or you have your mom or your husband say something negative. I am a confident business builder. Mm -hmm. I'm successful because I am moving forward and I'm helping people find financial freedom. I'm just using some of your words that you said a minute ago. Yes. I want to feel confident and successful. Mm -hmm. Are you getting... It's just really, really interesting how creativity mm -hmm. starts to open up when we're operating from those thoughts and those feelings versus the other. I don't know. What, what are you thinking? What do you feel? I felt brave enough, I think, because I have been doing um, mindless things. Oh. <laughs> so um, I have been doing these. We're almost done. For the craft fair, they ah, are, mm -hmm. they are literally shower hooks covered in jute twine, but working on them helped my brain space mm -hmm. to be able to have this conversation. Well, I'm super proud of you for being <laughs> and like letting <laughs> me totally put you on the spot, but everybody that's listening, I am positive that they're relating at some level. And this mm -hmm. is why coaching is so powerful, you guys, because all of us can relate and resonate with, with a piece of what you're saying for sure. Mm -hmm. And how, so I'll, everyone that's listening can be writing down some of their, their thoughts that they're thinking and the emotions that they're feeling and where they want to be operating from. Because when we have the awareness, then when we're feeling the certain feeling or we're thinking the certain thought, we can quickly recognize, pivot, <laughs> and mm -hmm. use the way we want to be operating. Did you hold that type in? I felt like you were. <laughs> so I want to feel confident and success successful. There was another word you used a minute ago and I can't remember what it was. Accomplished, was that the one? Accomplished, I think so. Krista piped that in. Mm -hmm. Yes, Heidi says grateful. Learning to feel the emotions and choose new ones and new thoughts is a powerful tool. Mm -hmm. Melody is saying, go Amber. <laughs> Thank you, Melody. And I love you too, Stephanie. I saw that. <laughs> that popped up briefly. You know, I have the list of questions that I asked for coaching. Uh, you mean the question I just, that I just asked Amber? I don't, I know. <laughs> I don't think I, I was just asking like, um, the basic question of like the business builder question. 
I don't know, pop in the chat if you have sp specific on that. Yeah, relate with the negative fearful thoughts every day, sometimes a lot every day. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Thank you, Amber, for pip piping in. That was- You're welcome, was cool. you're welcome. And I need um, Brooke that spoke earlier. What is Brooke's last name? I might need to message her and pick her brain about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fine. Um, Brenda, did you have anything you wanted to pipe in before we pop off? Sorry, I have a little trouble unmuting. Um, now, other than just to say thank you so much for letting us be a part of this, um, we know the thing about listening to people in coaching like that is so, so much of our thoughts, we aren't even aware of, mm -hmm. and we don't even like think about why I'm not doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing. And so that's just my, what I was just thinking on is listening. Let's just be more self-aware. Let's stop those thoughts and think about what they are. And is it benefiting me or is it something I need to change? So thanks for pointing that out, Megan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wanted to um, just give you three points that Jessica gave to us. And that is um, three mindsets why you're not, you may not be selling, okay? Why we feel stuck or why we're in that spin cycle of scarcity. <laughs> <laughs> um, or fear. Okay. Number one is that we feel behind. Okay. The scarcity, feeling desperate, that kind of thing. But the truth, the true thought that you can be thinking is I'm actually right on time and I do know what to do next. So anytime your brain offers you or accuses you of being, being behind, you can combat that with a different thought. I'm right on time. I know what to do next. Number two is it's never convenient. Just like Brenda was talking about them. Um, they have 11 children and they were willing to invest big commitments in doing <laughs> events for people that were willing to share and willing to gather people together for them to come and talk to. So it's never convenient. <laughs> so if you're waiting for life to, to be, get convenient for you to get successful in your business, <laughs> you might be waiting a long time. And then number three is 90 percent of people will say no. So expect resistance and don't be surprised. Okay. And my favorite part, you have anything else you want to pipe in, babe? Nope. All right. I'm going to give you some, a homework assignment. And some of you already know about this assignment because you were on my book study call last night but it's the I am clear statements, okay? So I want you to write down five I am clear or it is clear statements. I'm gonna give you a couple examples so that you guys just have some, some framework to work from. So um, number one, this is, these are just some examples. It is clear that I will attract godly people who also want to please the Lord in this business. It is clear that I'm a good leader and I'm able to develop leaders on my team. It is clear that this is a tool that I can give hope for better health, finances, and open doors for gospel conversations. It is clear that my paycheck will grow when I take intentional action steps that create results. It is clear that I am made to grow and change by being a curious person who is full of grace and compassion to herself and team. I like this one. It is clear growth and success in this business makes people a better wife, friend, business owner, and communicator. It is clear when I'm in action and attract, or sorry, it is clear when I'm in action, I attract hardworking, like-minded women or men who want this and need this business and all that comes with it. It is clear this business works when we work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So if you are on my team, pop your I am clear statements into our October runners chat or if you're in my tiny habits chat, pop them in one of those. We'll keep each other accountable with that. And I am doing gift card drawing tomorrow night. So sorry, Thursday morning, but you have to have yours in by Wednesday at midnight. <laughs> So let's get clear on things. Let's really maximize the end of 
2022. I know we are preparing for the best year ever in 2023. So super pumped about that. Okay, guys, thanks for hopping on. Thanks for everybody that shared. Looking forward to an amazing month of November. Talk to y'all soon.